Now, now I'm going to talk briefly about handling the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind. That means something inside us that we are not aware. That we're not aware. Now the Bible words, I just use the same words as yesterday. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So if a person has evil treasure inside him, then evil will come out. But if the person has good treasure, then good things will come out. And then as good thing will come out in his words and his action and his, in his attitude. Now we talk about the mind and the feelings. All this came out. And I want to talk about this subconscious mind. What is it? Basically it's like this. When we were young, if you were rejected many times, people say, you can never do a good job. Nobody likes you. And then when we grow up, what happens is, whenever someone asks us to do something, we'll say, I cannot do it. Or when someone uh, uh, says, uh, you are a handsome looking man. You are a beautiful lady. Now, as a compliment, not, not to chase after the person. And the person no, 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 I'm not, I'm not pretty. I'm not pretty, I'm ugly, I'm ugly. I have met a student like that because I taught in a school, I taught a religious class. Okay. And one time I talked about self-image. And I asked these people to write down one to 10. How do they think about how they look? Now how they look is really not important, but how they think about it affects their self-image. Now if you think you are like regular, then it's number five. You think you are very pretty, number 10. You think you are super, super ugly, number one, okay? And then one girl wrote down one. And I wonder who that is. And I look in the class, the name, that's the most beautiful girl in the class. So I asked this girl to come out. I said, I noticed you wrote down one for yourself. Do you think you're ugly? She said, yes, I'm very ugly. But I said, I will tell you, you are the most pretty girl in this class. She said, no, no way. Okay, I said, can you trust a friend here? She said, yes, okay, what's the name? And then she said the name. And then, okay, I asked her to come out. Come out, come here. And I asked this friend, what do you think, she, how she looks? Oh, she's pretty. Now, can you believe her? It's hard for her to believe because all her lifetime, all the people around her say, you are ugly. You're the most ugly girl. And she always believed that. It's in her subconscious mind. And then when people look at her, she would be thinking, are they saying I'm ugly? So this is the subconscious mind. For instance, just now when we talk about pastors. Now I'm not saying any pastor because I don't know who that is. Yeah. And I'm not attacking anyone. I'm just saying in a general rule. Sometimes some pastors, if someone has strong spiritual gift, sometimes. Now sometimes it's the pastor's wife, sometimes it's the pastor. Then he feel, wow, this person will have, he has this gift, that means I will lose my place. Now this came from subconscious mind. He did not realize that. Yeah. How, did, how did it come? Yeah. When he was young, he was doing something, and then someone else can do better. And then the teacher or the parents say, okay, he can do it better than you, let him do it. So he has this feeling. When he can do something, someone else might be better than he. And if someone is better, he will be kicked out of the responsibility. So when he became a pastor, that sense of insecurity come up. Let me tell you, we all have this subconscious, unhealthy subconscious mind. I use an, an illustration. One time I was eating with my wife and I saw four children. Two children from one family, two other children from another family. And the two children from one family A, they're very happy playing, very happy and then singing and doing all kinds of things. 
And then the other two children were just watching them. Just watching them. Did not participate. I can see that the two other child kind of, I mean, they, they, they might be thinking I cannot do it or I wish I can do it. I see at this young age already, these two have the fear. When people play, I cannot join in. And then later, another mother, not the mother of these two children, another mother say, come, 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 join them to play. But when they joined, they were afraid. They could not participate. That's from the subconscious mind. Because it's all buried inside. It's all in an experience in the past. No one like to play with you. No one like you. You will have no friends. And let me use another illustration. One time in my church before, and at the front of the church, and there was one chair put there. You know, there, there were musical instruments. It, it was not like this place. This place has many chairs. But in that place, no chair should be put up there. And then there was one chair. So I, I told them, I said, in the future, if you see a chair, please take it down. Okay. And then one girl said to me, I didn't do it. I did not say she did it. I did not say it. Mm -hmm. I just say, next time if you see a chair up there, please put it down. But because her family member always said to her, if anything wrong in the family, it's you. Mm -hmm. So when I said, please take the chair down, she would think I'm talking about her. Yeah. I never thought about her. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know whether it's our people who put it there or because we were using someone else's church. Whether it's the people in that church or our church, it doesn't matter. I don't mind. I don't mind. But she minds very much. She wants to say, it's not me. She wants to defend herself to prove that it's not her fault so that I won't blame her. Let me ask you, do you have unhealthy subconscious mind inside you? That when people are talking together, sometimes you think they are talking about you, criticizing you. They think they don't like you. When you try to join in a group, you think they might not want to talk with you. So all this negative thinking comes out. Or when you preach a sermon, you'll be thinking, these people don't like my sermon. They are criticizing my sermon. They are impatient. They are unhappy about it. Or when we are doing evangelism, we might say, well, they won't like someone like me, and so if I do evangelism, I will fail. So this subconscious mind will affect a whole lifetime, and affect the marriage too. Let me tell you, good marriages generally are built up by people who treasure themselves and treasure other people. They have a good self-image of themselves and good self-image of other people. That, I use an illustration. There are some people, you are nice to them, and they will say this. Why are you so nice to me? What did you want me to do? They think they don't deserve it. And if someone treat them nicely, they think, you must have a reason. You want me to do something, right? So they cannot take it. And then, and then when people are not nice to them, they get angry. They don't like me. My husband don't like me. He doesn't want to spend time with me. He's always saying people don't like them and they think they are not likable. Now this will affect the whole lifetime. If you have a husband or wife who, don't like, who doesn't like himself or herself, you try to be nice to them, they still feel very unhappy. It's very hard to relate. But for my, my wife, let me tell you my wife, how she is. For my wife, whenever I do anything to her, when I ask her, do you have time tonight? And she'll be very happy. What do you want to do? And then I say, okay, I'd like to date you tonight. <sighs> very happy. And then she'll send me messages. Do you know why I'm happy today? And I'll answer her, because I asked you to date, to date you tonight. And then she said, you're right. So she always responds like a little child, very happy. She grew up in a family that really loved her. She has self-confidence. 
And then when people say that, I like you, I thank you, she always express happiness. She doesn't fear when this person says he likes me, maybe he has some reason. Maybe he really doesn't like me. But he said that he likes me because he wants to make me think he likes me. Some people think like that, right? Now this is me and her. When we take pictures, we always, our heads stick together or close to each other, or look at each other, or lean on each other. So that's how we are. We want to enjoy life. We want to enjoy life. And she's an enjoyable person. She's an enjoyable person because whatever I do for her, even if I buy a little gift for her, she's always very happy. She's always excited. So anything I do to her always bring me rewards. The reward is she's happy because she's happy inside. Let me ask you, are you happy inside? Or are you unhappy inside? No matter what people do, you won't be happy. Yeah. And you're thinking about they might be unhappy. And what happens is, it's hard to please you, right? And people find it hard to build a relationship with you. It affects your self-image, affects your joy. Let me tell you, I've talked about the love of God, right? Enjoy the love of God. Yeah. If you have a very low self-image and then uh, unhealthy self-image, it would be very hard for you to say every day, God is loving me, God is uh, likes me very much, God is going to bless me today. It's very hard for you to say that. You would say, no, Pastor Yu is liked by God, but not me. God never likes me. I'm not good enough that you would have this thought. So it would be hard to build up relationship with God and how to build up relationship with people and how to build up ministry and the whole life is unhappy. Can that be healed? Yes. 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 Jesus can heal all people. But first we realize we have this problem. Let me ask you, please close your eyes. If you think that you are affected by this unhealthy self-image and it's really make you very unhappy now if it's a little unhealthy it's not it's I'm not asking you I'm asking if you if this is really affecting you makes you unhappy with people unhappy with yourself unhappy with God if that happens to you if that's you please raise your hand if you find that your self-image is very low that you are very unhappy about yourself could you raise your hand that your self, your subconscious mind is very unhealthy. Could you raise your hand? Please don't mind. It's okay. When I know it, I just, when I see you, I care about you. And then pray for you. Have your hand raised up high if you have this problem. Okay. Thank you. Now, I might not remember everyone who has that problem. But I want to say that I think it's more than these people. Some people, because they might feel so bad, they won't, don't want to raise their hand. Because they feel too bad. So how can we change? The point is, how can we change? Do you believe God can change them? Yes. Let me tell you a testimony of a girl in our church. She's in her 20s. When she came to us, because she has been yelled by her family members, yelled at by the family members all the time, so she always is negative. She didn't have friends, she could have, didn't have good friends. Her jobs, she was fired every few months from her jobs. Now in Hong Kong, it's very different from here. There are many jobs. Uh, good jobs, there are not too many, but Ordinary job, there are many. You want to do ordinary work, you can always find ordinary jobs. And, but she works, she graduated from the university. But she was fired every few months. And then she came to our church. And then we prayed for her and she said she experienced the joy of the Lord. Very happy. But then later, she fell in love with a guy who doesn't love her. She fell in love with a guy who doesn't love her. 
and she was hurt greatly. And then she lost the joy. She was very unhappy. And then, in a place of work, she, she said the people were gossiping about her. And she was unhappy. And she was, every day she goes to work, she was suffering. She wanted to quit the job. And she wanted to die. And then when she told us, we kept counseling her and praying for her. But one day, God helped her greatly by speaking to her in a dream and say, we have said that to her already. We have guided her to do that already, but she was not willing. She was willing, but she was not willing to do it totally. The voice said in her dream, said to her, leave the guy. He doesn't love you. Leave the guy. And she obeyed. And when she left the guy, she was really joyful and peaceful. And then her relationship with her workers of getting better and better because I've counseled her how to do it. So her self-image from very low is getting higher and higher. And also she stay in the presence of God. And now she can experience the joy as I have experienced. She said, anytime I pray now, I can experience the joy of the Lord. What I'm telling you is, you can be healed. You can be healed. Now how? Now you know Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor and He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to comfort all who mourn and the oil of gladness instead of mourning. So God wants to heal us. God wants to heal us. But how can you be healed? Let me describe this. Now this is a bottle of water, clean water. Suppose this is your heart. Suppose this is your heart. And instead of clean water, it has dirty water inside. Dirty self-image inside. If it's all dirty water inside, now what can you do? As a Christian, you can pray to God and ask God to forgive you and start to have healthy self-image proclamation. Like this, say it with me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I'm very, very important. I'm very, very important. I'm very, very precious in the sight of God. I'm very, very precious. Even when people look down upon me. I'm very, very important. And God can raise me up. And God can cleanse my soul. And take away all my sadness. And give me joy and freedom. So I feel happy about myself. Now when you pray every day like this, actually a lot of this dirty water will be changed to clean water. But it might not change overnight. It will not change overnight. It will change part of it. And then every day when you wake up, you declare this, God is loving me, God is with me, God is blessing me. Every day when we wake up, we declare that. And then also in some powerful deliverance. What is powerful de deliverance? Then you let go of all burdens and you say, it doesn't matter, people don't like me, it doesn't matter, God likes me, that's the most important. And then you suddenly set free. And you say, I experience the joy of the Lord, I'm very happy. Then keep that presence of God. Keep that positive self-image. And if that negative self-image on a negative subconscious mind come, comes back to you and say, you are no good, nobody likes you, they, they, they will reject you, then you say, no, in Jesus' name, no, I reject that. Those thoughts are not healthy. Those thoughts are not from God or from Satan. And then keep declaring, keep believing. Then what happens is, you know, the subconscious mind is like that like an iceberg. You know iceberg? In a, a, a North Pole and South Pole, there are many icebergs. There are ice floating in the water. And most of it is underwater. A small part is above water. And most of it underwater is represent what is in our heart, in our subconscious mind. It's hidden. Our unhappy feelings, our unhealthy self-image is all hidden inside. 
and all hidden inside by this affecting us. But it, it will show up at the top. How does it show up? When people talk to you, look at me. When people talk, look, look at you, talk to you, you talk like this. And you talk with a voice like this. I don't know. I don't know what to do. You talk with a voice like that. That's because of the low self-image and the unhealthy self-image, unhealthy subconscious mind. And so this will affect the whole person. It will show up in how you respond to people, how you relate to people, how you believe God's love, how you can trust in God's love and experience His joy. So all this will show up, will show in our daily life. So, but every day if you change a little bit, and I told people, God told me this, and tell people, if you change 1% a day, 100 days you will all change. That way you have no pressure. If I improve a little bit every day, but actually in a prayer, you improve more than 1%. If you really trust in the Lord, you can improve 20% or more. And then you keep doing that, then you become, you know, the whole person is renewed and your subconscious mind is changed. Let me tell you, when I was young, my parents had a divorce. And then my father brought in his second wife. And my father gambled a lot. Very often he took things from the home and sell it and gamble, and he can lose his whole salary. So my stepmother became very angry and he yelled at us and she screamed. And after she came, after a short time, I start to have nightmares, bad dreams. And I start to walk in my dream. That's how serious it was when I was young. I walked in my dream. How many of you walk in your dream? That you, you would get up and do something and then sometimes you don't know it, sometimes you know it. Sometimes you jump out from the dream and like you run away or something like that. Do, how many of you have that problem? Okay. I was like that. And the most serious time when I had this nightmare was like this. This walking in the dream. In a dream I was building a wall in front of me. But when I finished the wall, I find out I was standing inside a wall. You understand? When you build a wall, you're outside, right? But I was inside, so when I build a wall, I'm inside a wall, locked in the wall. So I was afraid, and I hit the wall, and it was not in Hong Kong, and the wall was very thin. And I hit it and made a hole in the wall. That was the most serious dream I had. But God can heal me completely now. Because every day, and that's why I treasure the love of God. Every day, I believe in God's love. I believe God gives me hope. God can change my life. And God can use my life. Every day I declare that. And the more I declare that, the more I believe. And then whenever I pray, I believe that God is listening. God likes my prayer. God likes to listen to me and likes to bless me. So that builds up my self-image and builds up my subconscious mind so that my subconscious mind becomes more and more healthy. Now how do you know your subconscious mind is not healthy? When you have bad dreams. How many of you have bad dreams? How many of you have bad dreams? When you have bad dreams of fear, of anger, frustration, because inside you, you have these feelings inside you, locked inside. And we can be healed by every day pouring out this dirty water and letting in more clean water from God. And then we are healed gradually. And whenever you want to believe, I am no use, God doesn't love me, change it. That's not right. Whenever you say, I have to be angry at people, change it. I don't have to be angry. Even when my children are not good, I don't have to be angry. Even when my husband or wife has an affair, even when they have an affair, is it right for me to be angry? No, because if we get angry, we'll lose more. We'll lose the whole life. But if we, but if we say, okay, he has this problem, I want to heal that marriage. I want to build up the marriage again, but I don't want to do it with anger. Let me ask you, how many of you you don't have to raise your hand. Whenever you see people have done something wrong, you always treat it with anger. 
you always handle the problem with anger. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why didn't you come earlier? Why did you, why did you, why did you listen to me? If you are always responding with anger, that means there is anger hidden inside us. But you say, it doesn't matter. Can you say it with me? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God has a way. God has a way. I can relax in God. I can relax in God. I can be strengthened by God. I can be strengthened by God. I can be healed by God. I can be healed by God. I can relax in God. I can relax in God. I can be blessed by God. I can be blessed by God. I can be healed totally. I can be healed. Hallelujah. I can be a happy person. I can be a happy person. Let me ask you. How many people in your church you think they have unhealthy subconscious mind? How many people around you that you see have unhealthy subconscious mind? Are there many? Or few? I tell you, many. Especially in this country. Because in this country, many people are poor. When they are poor, they, have, they will blame themselves. They will fear, they will worry and they have frustration. All of this is buried down. And also from the parents, because the parents have frustration. And the frustration came onto them. So if you have learned to do this, later we'll talk about healing, how to do healing. When you learn how to do healing, you understand this negative thinking, negative subconscious mind, negative feelings, or negative thinking and, and sins, all of these are destroying people. So when we understand this, then we can step by step bring healing. First to ourselves. First to ourselves. Then we get healed. First to ourselves. Okay? Let us stand up right now to pray to God to let Him heal our subconscious mind. Even a little bit is okay. Even healing a little bit is okay. Oh, 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 Lord Jesus. Now everyone relax. Close your eyes, please. Close your eyes. Concentrate. Go back in a prayer. Go back to what instance you were hurt by people badly. Go back to your, in your memory to an instance when you were hurt greatly. Go back to the instance and feel the feeling at that time. What happened to you at that time? Feel the feeling at that time when you were hurt greatly. Oh, Jesus, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Just ask Jesus, Jesus. Were you there? Do you realize my heart? Do you realize my heart? Oh Jesus, do you realize my heart? Do you know that I was greatly, greatly hurt? Hello? Do you know I was greatly hurt? According to the Bible, it's on. Hello. According to the Bible, all the days of our life we come before one of them came to be were already written in God's book. So God already knew us before we knew Him. So God already knew our suffering at that time. And you say, now you say to Jesus in your heart, Jesus, I was suffering greatly. Tell Jesus your feeling at that time. Jesus, I was suffering. I felt very bad. I felt hurt. 
I felt disappointed. I felt fear. I was afraid. So tell God your feelings. Oh, ask Jesus, how do you feel about me? Jesus, how did you feel about me at that time? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus cares about me. Jesus cares about me. Jesus cares about me. Jesus, Jesus does care about us. You say, Lord Jesus, you care about me. Oh Lord Jesus, you care about me. I had all this unhealthy subconscious mind that I feel very bad about myself. I feel very bad about myself. Oh Lord Jesus, come and comfort me. You ask Jesus, come and comfort me. Hold me in your arms. Hold me. Tell me how much you love me. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me. Jesus knows my pain. Jesus knows my hurts. Jesus knows my pain. You love me. Loves me, Jesus wants to heal me. 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 You hold on to the hand of Jesus. Jesus, you want to heal me. Set me free from this negative thinking. Set me free from this negative subconscious mind. You love me. You care about me. You want to heal me. You want to bring healing to me. Oh, you want to set me free. Now blow out all this hurt feeling. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, Jesus. Take out these hurt feelings. Take out this hurt feeling from my heart. Take out these hurt feelings, Lord Jesus. Take out these hurt feelings. Now, here now, I represent Jesus to say to you, you are all very precious. I represent Jesus to say to you, I love you, I care about you. I know your pain. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been greatly hurt. I know you feel very bad about yourself. But I will heal you. Amen. I will lift you up. Amen. I will carry you. Amen. I will bring you to a high level. Amen. I like you. Amen. I like you Amen. because you want to learn. Amen. I like you Amen. because you want to be healed. I like you. Amen. I want to heal you. Amen. Now I want to say this to you. You can go back in time to your little yourself to yourself when you were young and you talk to yourself you hold your little self and talk to the little boy or girl I know you're very painful now but one day you become a Christian one day you become strong one day you become healed and you can do it you can do it so you tell yourself you can do it you are improving you are improving. You have hope. 
You have hope. Tell yourself, you have hope. You can be healed. You are getting better already. You are getting better already. And all these hurts can go away. All these hurts can go away. Jesus can set you free. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, set me free. 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 Now pull it together. who hurt me. I can have compassion on the person who hurt me. I can forgive him or her. Actually, he's more miserable than I am. I can let her go. I can let him go. I can bless him and bless her and forgive him. And I can forgive myself. Oh, ha, 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 ha. I can be happy. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Ha ha ha. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Ha ha ha. More. I can myself more. Hallelujah. God really likes me. God really likes me. God really likes me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Now do you see how legalism, legalism is always requiring people, demanding people, accusing people can hurt us. That's why we need the grace of God, the love of God to heal us. So every day, immerse yourself in the love of God to be healed. And believe that you can be healed. How many of you feel better? Hallelujah. <laughs> and then you... Appreciate yourself. Thank God. Thank God. I'm following God's instruction. I'm following God's way. I'm all free now. <laughs> I'm all free now. Now sing out loudly. <laughs> Smile loudly. Laugh loudly. Every day, Amen. can we live in joy? Yes, we can be healed every day, even one percent a day. Do you think you are healed more than one percent now? Yes, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God.